In this video, we'll begin introducing some probability functions that can be used to compute the probabilities of uh, certain uh, of a random variable taking on certain values. So we'll begin with the case of a discrete random variable for which we can give a functional form of the probability distribution that is associated with a given random variable. Let's say X, which can take on values X1 all the way to Xn. So by convention, the random variable is a capital letter and the value that a random variable can take is a lowercase letter. And notice here that even though it's discrete, you can have infinitely many possible values associated with a discrete random variable. So the functional form of a probability distribution for a discrete random variable is called the probability mass function. And this tells you that the probability PR of your random variable taking on some particular value XK is a certain value given by P of X uh, K. So you can think of this as a function that if you input a certain value of your random variable, it tells you the probability of, uh, of that happening. So some properties of the probability mass function is that every probability associated with uh, the value of our random variable has to be uh, positive, okay? It can be equal to zero, uh, but it can't ever be negative. You can't have negative probabilities. And this is true for any one of your random variables. Another property is called normalization, which says that if you add up the probabilities of all of your random variables happening, this has to add up to one. This is an important quantity that every probability mass function must satisfy. If you add the probabilities of all of your events happening, you need to get a value of one. We can generalize this idea to continuous random variables. X, and because it's continuous, we will say it can take on any value between X1 and X2, and it could be inclusive or exclusive. And the functional form of the probability distribution for a continuous random variable is called the probability density function. And it tells you what the probability of having your random variable between the values of x plus dx and x. Okay, so in some infinitesimally small interval. And this is given by the probability density function, which will denote by f sub capital X of little x times dx. So again, this is the probability of your random variable taking some value between little x and little x plus dx. The, 
this also has to satisfy certain properties to be a true probability density function that are analogous to the ones we defined up here. So again, your probability density function must be uh, non-negative for all x in the interval where your random variable uh, is defined. So again, you can't, this is basically saying you can't have negative probabilities. It also has to satisfy a normalization condition, which says that if you integrate over all values of x, and here we're taking x1 to be negative infinity and x2 to be positive infinity, this has to equal to one. If this condition is not satisfied, then you don't have a true probability density function. And finally, it has a third property that will be of interest to us. If you want to calculate the probability of your random variable being between two values a and b, this is given by the integral from a to b of the probability density function. And we'll see some examples in, uh, in the next video of how we can use this. And finally, I'll just end by saying that these ideas can be generalized to, uh, to multiple random variables. Let's say we'll call them capital X and capital Y. So we'll, I'll show you for the continuous case, but it's completely analogous for the discrete case. So if you're interested in the probability of your random variable capital X taking on some value between X and X plus DX. And at the same time, your random variable capital Y taking on some value in this small interval, then you can use a probability, a joint probability density function to define that the probability associated with that event. And if X and Y are independent of one another, so the result of one doesn't affect the result of the other, then your joint probability density function is just the product of two single value probability density functions. Let's say F, uh, we'll call this H of X and this one G of X. G of Y, sorry, capital Y. All right, so in the next video, we'll see how we can apply some of these ideas to calculate the probabilities of finding an electron uh, in the 1s orbital of a hydrogen atom.